Hello and thanks for visiting my channel. Today I'm going to share with you some pros and cons of using a hitch mounted cargo carrier. I've come to appreciate the efficiency of owning small cars. Only once have I owned an SUV and that was way back in the 90s. Uh, they're never a pickup truck, although I have drooled over one or two in the past. I, I sometimes still long to explore trails and things like that. But for the most part, small cars do it for me. I like their economy, their handling, um, they're comfortable, and I've, I've always been a small car guy. But fast forward to 1999 when my wife and I were transferring across the country, and we decided we were going to make a 6,300 mile tour out of the transfer and we we're traveling with two cats and a turtle and we needed everybody to be comfortable. So my 98 Jetta TDI at the time uh, already had a trailer hitch on it and so plugging in a, a hitch mounted cargo carrier seemed like a no-brainer and it was also the cheapest way to get cargo outside the car. So we carried our luggage and some other things outside the car and then we did the transfer. I'll share a link of a write-up I did about that transfer years ago. The pros for these things um, they're the least expensive to get into. Even if you have to buy a hitch for your car, you can still get one, uh, the carrier and the hitch combined, for a little over $200. Uh, Kurt makes a hitch for the GTI that's it's only like 125 bucks or so. And Kurt also makes a hitch mounted cargo carrier that's right around $75. So very low cost of entry for this transport option. Some of the pros, um, like I said, it's the least expensive option to get into. It uh, keeps your cargo in the car's draft, which is really nice if you're into fuel economy. It's just tucked up against the rear bumper and it's probably catching barely any air at all back there. If you're transporting wet items, like I was a mountain biker at the time and I didn't want uh, dirty mountain bikes or muddy mountain bikes dribbling on top of my car if I was transporting them on a roof rack. So uh, the cargo carrier behind the car obviously lets that mud and everything just dribble onto the road or onto the, the carrier. It's relatively quick and easy to mount or dismount because all you're doing is just plug it into a trailer hitch and then slap in a hitch pin. And then uh, obvious a big plus for me because I used to show my uh, my Jetta at car shows was that this carrier doesn't touch the paint at all. It's uh, so no no such thing as marring the rooftop paint. It is easy to load and unload because it sits nice and low and it's out away from the car so you're not lifting up and over anything. And it's also completely silent back there as you uh, as you drive with it in your car's draft. So those are the pros. The cons, uh, to me, kind of a big one. 100% of the weight of that cargo carrier and its cargo, it's positioned behind the axle. So that's all pressing down on your rear tires and your rear tires only. And it's cantilevering, you know, an effect on your suspension in the back, so your rear suspension uh, moves a little bit more potentially. It uh, might obscure your license plate. In my Jetta and Passat, it did not because the license plate on those cars is in the trunk lid, but on the Golf, it's below the rear bumper top. And so I, I didn't realize it until I took the car out for a test drive and then I realized, wow, there's nothing I can do to make this plate more visible except relocate it. And with as often as my hitch carrier was removed and installed, I did not want to have to move my plate every time I put the thing in. So uh, uh, that kind of compelled me to use it a whole lot less. Your cargo is not protected from the weather. So I learned on that trip, that tour, I bought a nylon bag, I had all my cargo organized and uh, you know, this is back before the days of Amazon and, you know, fantastic websites that we have today. So I didn't research if it was waterproof or not. And uh, sure enough, our stuff got all wet. So you have to take extra measures to keep your stuff dry when it's transporting outside the car in a, on a hitch carrier. I think I mentioned that the uh, cargo is easy to load and unload. And what that also means is it's more vulnerable to theft. And so I was very careful to never park my car like during a rest stop someplace where I couldn't see it, either myself or my wife. Um, I certainly wouldn't leave it around the corner in the back with, you know, at a hotel like that, because all it takes is a knife to cut through just about any cargo bag that people use and your stuff is gone. Uh, so that's that's a, a small risk, but it's it's a risk nonetheless. Your 
loads, uh, depending on the layout of your cargo uh, carrier. My cargo carrier has a three inch rise on it so I can get more ground clearance because I used to, uh, one of the, my very first purchases used to scrape on the ground when it was loaded. So I have one now that's got a three inch rise, but the risk with that is blocking the tail lights. And to me, that's even worse than blocking a license plate. A license plate can get you pulled over by the police, but blocking your tail lights not only can it get you pulled over, but it also prevents you from letting your fellow drivers know what your intentions are, whether you're hitting the brakes or signaling a turn. Uh, and perhaps even visibility if we're talking about nighttime driving. So uh, that is that is a big con for me is blocking taillights. You just got to be careful how you load your carrier. When it's empty and you're just driving around the tray back there, it is invisible to fellow drivers. Now, mind you, nobody has any business being 24 inches away from my rear bumper, but it happens. Mine has been struck twice. No high speed impact things, usually it's stuff in a drive through or a little bump at an intersection because they weren't paying attention, but it happens. Uh, so having cargo back there certainly makes it more visible, but uh, if it's empty and it's gonna stay that way for a while, just, just take it off. It can be difficult when you're backing in a parking lot to know where the end of it is. Uh, if you have cargo on it, your rear camera, your backup camera is useless and you can't see it, the cargo at all. You check your mirrors and it's just invisible to you, so you can't tell. You All you can do is just guess where it might be, and you have to give yourself a little bit of extra room. And I'm sure it would be very unpleasant to back into another vehicle because you couldn't tell where your load was. So you get used to it, but it is a, it is a con to be aware of. Some random information about the cargo carrier. It's neither a pro or con. It's just a fact of life. Is um, their weight capacity. When you're shopping, you'll see an ad that says, oh, carries 300 pounds carries 500 pounds that's even better but the reality of it is it's your car that's the limitation and, and not even the hitch because if you're putting it on a passenger car then the hitch capacity is going to be stated as 200 pound tongue 2,000 pound trailer or if you've got a class 2 hitch and 350 pound tongue 3,500 pound trailer but the manufacturer of your car is the one who determines what it can carry or pull and on a Volkswagen uh, say a passenger car that's 175 pounds on the tongue and of that 175 pounds that includes the carrier itself which might weigh 40 pounds or even more and then whatever cargo you're putting back there and to make matters worse is the tongue capacity stated by the hitch or the manufacturer it's referring to putting your tongue your trailer on the hitch ball pressing straight down on it like this but when you have a cargo carrier and you plug it in to your to your receiver it's cantilevering the weight like this it's a different type of force so I think it'd be prudent to not exceed about a hundred pounds of cargo back there on that hitch I not knowing any better loaded 200 pounds during the uh, 6300 mile tour and uh, it was painful I dragged in intersections a lot <laughs> intersections and driveways and uh, I just didn't know any better at the time but now I think a hundred pounds is uh, it should be the limit. It's a smart way to do business. That's about all I can think of for the hitch mounted cargo carrier. This video is actually part of a much larger video in which I compare the hitch mounted cargo carrier to a rooftop cargo box and a small utility trailer. Check the link in the video description below if you're interested in seeing that. Thanks for being here and uh, click the subscribe if you like what I'm doing. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.